I will show you a little bit about how this green technology is being applied in some scenarios. So I would like to invite you to imagine a situation where in a rainforest in Romania, um, I understand there were some issue with illegal logging. So a lot of woods from the virgin forest were being cut illegally. I know this was a mm. huge issue in Romania a couple of years ago. In Huawei, um, we have um, this partnership with Rainforest Connect, where it all started here. When they're illegally logging the trees, there's a the chainsaw sound, there's a lot of um, sound that's being generated. What we did, we recycled the old Huawei phones, because one of our big selling points is our phones. We recycled the old ones and we made them into this device right here which is shaped like a flower. And what it does, it's a solar power, so as you can see, these are the solar panels we have put on it. And underneath, it's a, a sensor, and it's a voice connecting machine that's always generating and connecting the voice in the forest. Mm -hmm. What it does, it will send these voices to a database, to our cloud, on the Huawei AI cloud, where they analyze for chainsaw sounds. Mm -hmm. So what it does, it, once it, it detects a chainsaw sound in a location, it will send an alarm directly to a ranger who is locally near the rainforest and they will be able to see exactly where this is coming from and they can drive there mm -hmm. to stop the illegal logging or check out the situation there. So this was one of the cases that we have done um, to effectively stop the logging um, situation and we have applied this in uh, quite some places in the world for example i want to show you uh in greece for example we work with wind which is one of the operator and then we were trying to protect the poaching of this animal which is called balkan chimois i don't want to pronounce <laughs> it wrong okay. and other wildlife uh, what's special about this area is it's quite high in the mountains so it's very difficult for human to stay there and then, and then uh, track the situation so it's a very similar idea with a solar powered acoustic sensor. It detects once there's a gunshot or a chainsaw sound, you know, to cut the, the animals. Um, and, then, and then a ranger would be able to detect and go there directly. So it's, a, it's a effective. We have, you know, so far we put 7,000 hours of sound and then, and then there were also some gunshots. So we were able to really help. Um, preserve the wildlife and the bio biodiversity in that uh, area. Uh, we also have the um, case in Norway where they are trying to protect their aboriginal species of salmon mm -hmm. and then our sensor under the water is able to detect which salmon is actually indigenous to their land and then they were able to um, differentiate the invasive species compared to the ones they have so they were able to you know pick the ones that's not really from there to protect their own um, wildlife reservoir, for example. So these are the, um, some uh, cases we have, you know, where we protected uh, the wildlife. This is under our Tech for All uh, umbrella. Another one will be for education, because for Huawei, we recognize some rural areas, especially they don't have equal access to education, uh, especially in the Africa. Um, region, for example, we have the DigiTruck in Kenya. Uh, it's basically a container, so it's kind of like what we have here. But it's a refurbished container with computers, with solar power, with storage, everything you can think about in a digital classroom. And this, room, in this classroom is moving all around uh, Kenya. To, to invite students to come in for lessons. We will have teachers there with local uh, curriculum to teach them about the basic skills. So it's yeah. a mobile school. It's a mobile school, exactly. So this is our digi class, um, digi truck, we call it. This is in Kenya. Uh, we also have the digi school, uh, which is, uh, we, we provide devices and connectivity because in Africa, a lot of part of the region are not, we don't have internet actually. So we have to work with the local operators to uh, install those um, signal towers, as you see, and then and then we'll bring the books, the computer, and everything they need to at least have a basic um, digital literacy. This this was our goal, and we have worked, you know, since two years ago, we have worked with 90 schools in there. So it's quite good, and we have 52 beneficiaries. Uh, it was, you know, a, a 
a vision we want to do together with the local government as well, you know, to increase their digital literacy and to help these kids to have a better opportunity in life. Uh, once you have, you know, some basic skills, you will be able to, of course, you know, if you want to leave to find a better opportunity or have more local opportunities up to them. So we open up their future possibility, let's say. So these are the two uh, parts that I would like to tell you today about what, what um, technology can be done. Um, these are again green because as you know, all of the solutions we have implemented, they are solar powered. So solar power is a really, with the rainforest um, project, um, we are also looking for partners to also do it here in, in Romania. I know Vodafone, is, they already have such type of projects, mm -hmm. but we will always try to expand. We are, we are looking for partners as well, not just for rainforest, even for the protection of bears and foxes in Romania. There's, there's still another wildlife that needs to be protected. So we're constantly looking for partners because we have the uh, solutions and technology available. Of course, there's AI involved with our R&D, but we're able to you know, have those resources available. And then time and here on um, the digital uh, village. Again, it's about increasing the digital skills because there is we increase the fiber coverage. Uh, we want to reach more to the rural population, and we try to increase the internet user. But with the internet access of the internet, we're able to you know provide a lot of education, with health, and even with some development that like we have centers that are specifically designed for the children to to access the internet to have a computer because they probably don't have it at home. Could you implement that for such a study case also in Romania? Because the digital village sounds great and also very... Uh, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned it. This is, um, I wouldn't say too much because it's still under planning, but I am talking to some partners locally here who has a lot of resources, a lot of teachers who knows them in a rural area, and we're trying to design a program that will increase the digital literacy. And that was the goal that I wanted to. And I'm hoping you know this could um, generate a bit more acknowledgement, especially in the public sector, uh, you know, to increase uh, awareness of like the needs. Also, we're in Bucharest. Like it was difficult for me to imagine um, kids who cannot or adults who cannot use Microsoft. I don't know, like some very easy software. Uh, I'm sure you've seen from the DESI report from the European Union. Um, so we are trying to do something, probably not, not exactly like this, but uh, hopefully by the second part of this year you will hear uh, some information from our side. And I'm really excited to share that with you.